Hysteria Written by Mitch Green Narrated by Otis Gyrie She eradicates every living cell in my body to fracture. A bomb affair of grand attraction. The moist, soft skin that has wrapped her bones controls me, like some physical and emotional possession in which I cannot begin to decipher nor begin to understand. The arch that moves into her neck glistens like wet pavement, so erotic, emotive, in how her breasts beat to the sound of breathless screams. I didn't want to stop. I hadn't since I slid it inside her warmth, a connective energy that expressed the provocative exhibit of her form. From the length of her toes to the dynamic design of her thighs, transcending into the sexual bash of mortal vulnerability, I came to realize superb seduction at its finest. It wasn't the glow or the hue of her vibrating flesh, or even the stylish way she molded her figure between mine. No, for I saw the desire drawn the whites of her eyes, the raspberry smears of her cheeks, and the wide lips deafening my name. I wanted to climb inside her mouth, breach the plausible threshold of intimacy, and fulfill this suffocating appetite to infuse my every being with hers. Was it so difficult? My knowledge of such knew better, but it didn't restrict my ambition from pulling apart her legs even further. Her instructions were demanding. The oval gasps, breathing perfume to become my own, a toxic aroma transfixing me into total, and I mean total, hysteria. I felt her full weight thrive from above, pinning me into the leather seat, with her breasts curved back, hands gripping the edges of the steering wheel, and her knees positioned underneath my arms. I was binging on the fumes, breeding from her talent, faster and faster, allowing for brief wisps of cool wind to snuff the flame raging between us, over and over until I drifted into utter bliss. The surreal release of humanity that births in gripping desire, overwhelming me into a haze, and just like that it was over done, her body slipping away. No more connective flow, no chemistry to intune our souls. Nothing, just the aftermath of pulsating remembrance and the scent of her rich sweat. I always park a fair distance from the main road, back behind a family of trees, in between the growth of black and green, and always when the sun was beneath the earth. I never wanted them to leave. Falling in love, night after night, began to become something far greater than a foul burden, an intimate addiction. It had evolved into a vice, a living and breathing sexual vice. As she sat there beside me, just like all the others, bare flesh struggling with the clasp of her bra, I felt the need to not let her go, my inner monstrosity bleeding through, consuming my moral good. Shades took over her flesh as she slipped on cheap lace, a wardrobe too skeptical and off-putting for the structure of flawless mortality. Was it wrong of me to want to make her mine? Fucking her wasn't enough. I wanted her to belong, exist with me, in this space, beside me, forever. She never once smiled at me again after that, as all the others did. She just kept her face down, as if she had never met me, a perfect stranger, a stranger who had just shared a physical bond with her, 
a nude wanderer. Now shame? Why would I even waste time paying her? She didn't deserve it. Who would even lower their personal worth to printed paper? It is pathetic, poor whore. Poor beauty queen who bloomed sour. I could give her so much more. The path of liberation, freedom, into this wicked realm. She sat there waiting, tucking back the curls of orange behind her right ear. I never heard once her voice, only the gushing tones of her pacing moans, which continued to play over and over in my head, like a loud echo in a vacant vault, and louder it would become with my asking for one more. She giggled and huffed, as all the others, informing me of the extra charge, but I didn't mind. Money was the furthest from my mind. Like clockwork, she took it off, glowing hair collapsing over the arc of her shoulders and down to the bend of damp hips. She spaced apart the pink, instructing my participation, smiling once again. What an act, a model of filth to arouse the wants of a weak society, and I was the pawn, the trophy. I inhaled her like cocaine, tantalizing the squeaks to itch from her throat, ingesting the bitter substance like a cannibalistic artist. With her eyes closed, I was once again in control, the coordinator, a dominant force to maintain this moment and stabilize her quivering frame. Sex. It's odd in itself, rather animalistic than civil, quite unorganized in its manner, or the approach of my nature. I enjoy peeling them back from spirit to heart, learning their weaknesses, desires, dreams, those dark secrets that haunt them. This beauty, by chance, gave me nothing, not even her full name. So imagine my curiosity to why she wouldn't open up. I think it's all an equality of her to give back to me emotionally. I need that. I crave that. But she just undresses. The edge of her chin howled at the moon, revving to propel through the fog-swiped glass, thrusting violently. She was more than worth my time. How her wet corners charged my feed and hooked me into the turmoil of fatal relentlessness. It must have been a message for me to carry on, for her to be the one. I had surely left teeth marks in the crease of her hip. I could taste the blood almost as if I had placed a penny on the surface of my tongue and savored the tart coating. It was like that, but with a punch to my sensual perversion, furthering my interest up and into her throat. The smooth skin skimming beneath my palms, around solid limits that progressed perfection, I wanted to taste her forever. A fervorish fantasy is all. Some lust that had dwelled over time and blindsided my intention of ever drawing this close, this attracted. Into the deep end I had sunk, suffocating on the chlorine of her charm, which had induced me into an endless depth, a forbidden void that even myself never once experienced. But it was happening. I gently bit the shine of her cheek, my fingers forming a cast around her neck, with bold eyes growing into mine as I squeezed and squeezed, accepting the gush between my legs to return living color to her face. She shook like the recoil of an earthquake, and it drove me to lose myself a second time. The dance of selfish need had finally been relieved, and I fell back against the door, 
to focus on what I had just done. In some standpoints, it would have been artistic, even revolutionary, as she lied there exposed, still framed with the circles in her eyes, frozen, faded, blurred by boiling streams that slid down to repaint the peach wash of her flesh. It was silent. The ambiance of the seated interior spawned static, growing into the only sound heard, along with a muffled cage of hyperventilation. Control never felt so good. It was like these anxious lungs had become purged and made anew with ice, an eternal fix, to transform me from the bare condition into a state of eased conscious. Clear in thought, I placed my palm against her chest, feeling nothing, not even the warmth of her build, not the rising nor falling, not even the clammy moisture. The world spun to stone, in full tilt, winding my perception to twist and whirl around and around, vertigo crashing my senses, revulsion, perversion, beautifully situated measurements rounded into the curved end of five separated perfections. I could scream. The mixed ideology of pleasure and disgust scratched similarities into my brain, a vile but sadistically flawless feat that had sculpted from my quivering hands. What strength! There were still the minute physical reflections of those past few seconds, where she rumbled beneath me on fire, parts of her still shimmering beneath the soft cuts of her breasts, the outward thriving lines cast from her seam, and the spot just above her famed collar, above the purple clasp. In this destined patch of the world where the bowels of dusk have swallowed over and nothing is seen, not the dim patch of the earth or even the sinewy shade of the overlapping oaks, I have made us a home, a little section cut out, somewhere to bury the weight of her deep freezing frame. Over my shoulders I pulled her, having to exhale her thick tufts of curls, tickling the tip of my nose, still adorable, still full of charm, even after shifted blue. The repetitive chirping rang from the open car door, but failed in persistence of the distance as I carted her out even deeper, where the trail of the thick had not yet been tracked, into an expanded yet drawn-together piece of land between a moss-cradle tree and a risen mound. My knees buckled as I dropped down, lowering her over and down, shakes of dirt now sprinkled over caged lashes. Another time did I listen for a thud, a beating shudder, but with the funnel of my ear, nothing. The emotive relic had timed out. I told her not to move, that she would be fine here in this place, in this area of overgrown mass. How insane must I have sounded to the nestled life above? How out of my mind was I to reassure a corpse of her safety? It felt so right, so on point to the matter of belonging. Her flesh couldn't leave me now. Never would she share those legs again. I bound them with rope. I wrapped my naked width around her for a last time, feeling the stiff bumps of her chest against mine and the weakened warmth, enough to only cause a chill. If thought to see this moment as my motive all along, I wouldn't have been surprised, for they all enticed me in such ways, teasing out the raw nature of my hidden persona. I loved them. I fucking worshipped their ignorance their bliss, the way they would bite their tongue and look me in the eyes, queens of obsession. But for how long? It only ever lasted for an hour at best, 
and even then it would take a certain level of skill to become familiar with each of them. Sentencing up sexuality takes time, patience, an element of my design, which I never acquired. And ever so would time slip and I'd be left there without that connection, that bond. But not that night, as I sat there on the heels of my feet, cupped into the soil above her. I felt not only the chirping breeze lick the sides of my neck, but the surreal realization of an instance. Confiding within me reason of being, a reason for the pallid angel adapting to mask similar aspects of a chunk of cold stone, lying just above the surface of warm culture. A society beneath roots to nourish their husks with decomposition, that earthly cycle repeating over and over, as it would soon do again. With me to witness, construct the entombment of such. Something so elegantly crafted is never easily put away, pushed beneath the gray salt. But it would have to be done, and soon, for the longer I waited, the quicker would the wax of her cheeks spoil. My thoughts began to reel in handling the pressure of the scene, both nerve-rending and provocative, as I lifted my lips from hers. I pried from inside my own breaking thoughts and moved from the grave to the rear of my car, taillights glowing in rich boldness, dousing me in red. The bags were shuffled about, mostly magazines, a spare of circular tread and a shovel. I kept it beneath the veil of illusion. Humanity falters in hope, cutting off the only supply of our empathetic sense. I had that, or once had it. But life opens you up into a field of monstrosity. It really molds you into the person that you have always hated or dreamed to be. However far the scale falls, I knew I wasn't upon the sympathetic extent. Somewhere placed unevenly inside my chest were the missing pieces of my soul. Maybe a bit psychotic, definitely neurotic, and the same goes to the erotic taste scorching the edge of my tongue. Love is blind, but not as blind as the voices peering past my reserve. A flipped switch shifting my track of moral expression, giving no hope to the man inside these soaked socks fleshed to the temples of my skull. Perhaps what I desired most was disappointment. The lack of ever fully understanding the human condition inside their pouring eyes, never the magnetized fetish that linked two people together. I was the lost, the damned, the object of unattraction. And here I stood, flaccid above her silent frame, with the wooden spade interloped between my arms and against the curves of my spine. Looking down at her one more time, just once more before I thrust it into the dampened soil beside her, washed from toes to knees in grub food, cooling rather and strangely revitalizing, it drove the wetness out from the cords of my hair to splash onto the outer cuff of tightened knuckles, bruised, purpled, fading into a pallid glow as each slash of earth was carted out. Another hack and I was done, the hole deep enough, wide in room to fit her comfortably. How would she look beneath the leveled sand? I am sure the earth will take her matter and mold a transcendent garden, golds and purples, bright in their birth to idolize her giving flesh, even the crystallized streams of her eyes, so vital to their healthy existence. My arms veined, legs scuffing toe cuts into the dirt, the smell of rotting perfume, and the feel of her chilled ankles gripped under my fingers. It was all for something, a cause of freedom, my self-made eradication of all the boiling transgression inside. 
Should I have modified a better path of life? A release of all this morbid bidding, only to reassemble myself into the model man? I hadn't the stomach. The ironic recognition of my current act stands to show how far I've slipped. I climbed down and heaved her onto me so that I not only could feel her hair among my chest, but also weight upon mine, warm versus cold. It made my sexual crave cringe. For a few moments, I didn't move. Lied beneath her, wrapping my smeared arms around her quiet ribs, holding her into me, fondling the forever perfective sculpture of her hips. I remember dozing off. The exhausted exercise of sex and murder had took its toll, and my eyes could no longer outlive the resistance. Neither the taste of dirt in my mouth, which choked me into a wake, or the movement upon me, freely, lashing into utter fucking madness. My eyes peeled back into exaggeration, swiping back and forth, but fixating on her wheezing chest as it flared in and out, beneath the outline of her shoulders sliding down, straight, yet directed up towards my face. The crown of her head rounded just beneath my stomach, buried into it, as if she was trying to fit inside. A heated gust against my skin, dawning me to panic. The impossible. Insanity of events had reversed the temp of her flesh. No longer cased in ice, she huffed, gasped, even moaned in guttural bursts. The cusp of her nose smudging down into my thigh. In an instant... All had changed. In mere seconds, the situation rendered itself to fit my horror, bleeding the edges of her teeth to carve into my meat. Exhilarating, sensually vivid, smashing a scream to bash open my voice, an acute chomp thriving me to push her off, with my hands finding the end of a trusted shovel. The whites in her eyes had been expelled, pressed inside the ripped polish, no longer waxed in smoothness, shredded to the crease of frayed lips, over chattering teeth, washed in the shade of my leg, but only before the narrow end of grooved metal struck. I wanted to scream again, puke, pack my wound in painkillers just enough to quench its throbbing burn, a fire flooding down into my weakened shin. Out I climbed, using the dripping tool as support, spitting tufts of grit from the back of my tongue, but never fully draining the bitter taste. My mind whirled around in a fog, my stance brought to a limp, and the horror of her sporadic expressions continued to flash behind my eyes like zipping road signs. There... From the other side of the brush, I saw the shape of my car, almost invisible in the veil of blackness, sitting, waiting. Every muscle began to ache, in unison with the pace of my stride, wincing the curves of my lips into stretching marks, a hindrance of concentration. I didn't bother closing the trunk— only the motion of tossing my mass behind a wheel into the loft of seclusion, all alone, in my head, where reality finally breached. A payback scenario spanning out in my mind is a foolish fault of my own. The image of her revitalized corpse haunted me over and over as I relived the abrupt images of her snatching face, dripping in gore. Between the colorful pieces of our strewn fashion, I found the keys, turned the ignition, and waited for the engine to roar in sputtering failure, churning silence. Rhythmic cries came from the hood, mechanical resuscitation slicing wide the ambiance of the timberland, 
Over and over I tried, the tips of my fingers growing numb in my bare toes, already unrecognizable by the mud, and blood ached in pained pinches. Thrashing behind the wheel, the earth beneath me, to the deep skies above me and all around began to tremor, wildly wrecking the stability of equal ground. Among the sounds of streaking slaps, fogging the distinction of clawing hands, I saw silhouettes of gnawing faces press against the glass, their expressions blurred into smears. Faded in mass, multitudes of crawling, groaning shades folded over, caving in the roof, the hood, even the doors that weren't even locked, all buckling down and beside my frantic frame, screaming in full capacity of all that I could exhibit. There were no more than twenty, but all less than fifteen, all average in height, with the matted tissues of their lips, held together by the seam of a long swaying hair, beautifully pinned with the glow of black and blonde, bare breasts curving down to the direction of irregular knees, and up around a throat bleached in fingerprints, eyeless, their cheeks still bled, like a rainstorm of red splashing in. Squeezing through, I became joined at the only vacant space in the car, constantly rocking, breaking. I felt their hands and arms tear off my legs, pull apart my chest, and dig deep into the core of my humanity. United, I have never felt this close, physically nor emotionally. A connective energy, bonding us together upon the breached limitation of ultimate intimacy. <laughs>